um, leaders, past and present, uh, elders, uh, brothers, sisters. Amisha, baun bendu cawa je baun cakap, hikri siwa, hikri bayar dia dah itu, bendu tu sini. Assalamualaikum. Um, amazing concept by Dr. Abid uh, and his team um, and heads off for organizing such an event. Panjab, yesterday Panga Chono, you bachung time maintain current joy, so we are behind and we're trying to uh, catch up on time. Um, truth be told, and I saw my niece is going towards the other side. Mukeman Thiote, I'd rather be on the beach than sit here, Pane. I have no choice. When Abid calls, you know, you have to um, listen. Um, so, but um, I in discussions on health, I have been uh, requested to moderate the first one. I asked Abid, and he told me that I have to stand here all the time, so I have no choice. So, we chai in Ipitos, Alhamdulillah. Thanks to Asnain and his team, at least Juice Milio, Alhamdulillah. Um, so, my uh, panelists that I'm going to ask to come um, on stage are um, uh, Dr. Musa uh, Warwani, this from USA, uh, Dr. Saira Sokwala from Nairobi, uh, Dr. Samira Osman from Mombasa, Dr. Hafsa Jin from Mombasa, and uh, Dr. Abdulalim Jin as well, please. Abid has been gracious enough to uh, not only give, us, give me the list of the uh, panelists, but also provide me with all the um, abstracts in this particular section. Jakiwa, uh, present here, and alhamdulillah, um, we got uh, a number of abstracts, very good abstracts. Um, so the idea behind uh, this session was K. It was difficult. I mean, normally if people have um, participated in uh, this type of this type of presentations. Okay, you know, abstracts went to somebody is asked to uh, make a presentation on that abstract, and questions and answers uh, then uh, follow after that. Um, because the number of abstracts are so many, uh, it was felt the team felt that it's better. Okay, we have uh, like a panel discussion um, based um, mainly on those abstracts as well. But of course, um, yeah, questions came one. Uh, and as uh, he uh, said, if you have audience, please uh, feel free um, to ask. So I'll start off by um, uh, simple things. Uh, what is important in Iraiyu? Health is important, and that's why we are starting with health. We have a structure. We have a problem with health issues. We have a problem with health issues. I can structure the Mombasa Memon Medical Center at the Halicia, Nairobi, what is the structure? Uh, if not, do we need to have a structure? So I'm going to ask, um, I'll start with uh, Dr. Abdulalim Jin, Mombasa, what is the current structure as far as uh, health and its determinants are concerned? All protocols are observed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Currently in Mombasa, uh, as op uh, opposed to other jamaats, uh, alhamdulillah, we have the, uh, our main medical center, the Maiman Medical Center. And uh, this is integrated into the Maiman Health Services Board. So Maiman Health Services Board has different arms. Yeah. It has various arms. <clears throat> it is not only the Maiman Medical Center. So we, uh, it has a uh, 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 provision for uh, community health. It has provision for uh, school health. Yeah. It has provision for the elderly, how to, uh, how to uh, go to the elderly people of the Jamaat. So probably, uh, when I say elderly means probably the home-based care. So we are, we are structured towards uh, providing services for this, basically these communities. Yeah. Uh, Memon, Health, Memon Medical Center uh, <clears throat> has to further branch out 
to okay we are not confined to our 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 uh, uh, community only yeah we provide com uh, health services to the surrounding communities also those who are not uh, because we are not a non profit uh, we are we are we are not a non profit uh, we are not, we are non profit uh, organization so we provide we try to provide services at the most affordable prices and we, uh, keeping that in mind the community around the meman uh, villa yeah basically partakes of that uh, of the services that we have to offer yeah so basically uh, yeah meman meman medical center is the center of uh, from which we actually then uh, branch out into other areas um, <clears throat> so, in terms of progress, Abdul, Abdul Alim, what do you think? Okay, from where we started to where we are, and what's what's our goal? Uh, <clears throat> right now, we have limitations in our services. Yeah, uh, at at the at the center, uh, we would really love to expand our services. Yeah, but because of the limitation of space. Um, it's uh, we are looking at branches or uh, into specialized fields but for that we need to have a a full fledged hospital yeah so uh, that is for the future um, it is in the pipeline of course but um, uh, yeah because of uh, restriction of uh, finances space it's still in the pipeline yeah Alhamdulillah. so i think memon ponte uh, clinic i but now we need a memon hospital and inshallah inshallah that will also happen um, if i may ask dr saira sukala nairobi me model of healthcare kurwai structure kurwai pala in jamaat members like karna yeah, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh it's indeed a pleasure to be here and to be part of this uh, panel discussion and I think this is something that we've been working on together for a couple of years. The Nairobi may unfortunately so far or till now we are not as blessed to have a clinic model that we have in Mombasa where we are now also looking at uh, the aspect of the hospital coming up. Um, at the moment Nairobi may there is a plan of coming up with the medical clinic and the kind of model that we are looking at is a little bit different from what we are doing in Mombasa where we, we would wish to plan more on a specialized clinic uh, basis, uh, focus primarily uh, on chronic care models and also on preventive care, along with providing primary care the way our clinic in Mombasa is doing already. So at the moment, uh, what is happening in Nairobi is Kepanja, like we've got a small percentage of uh, members, about 20 kanain jiki ke, welfare gender range. So the welfare takes care of those. Uh, members of uh, the community. At the same time, as far as I look at the, the welfare aspect of the community involvement, there's a lot of involvement when we look at their uh, provision of like, let's say emergency, especially in the COVID times, we really saw that coming up, is where they would be up to, be, to uh, facilitate admissions, for example, to facilitate uh, down payments, to facilitate discharges without having to uh, pay up uh, the bills and all that so that later on payments, nothing. So welfare takes up a good chunk of the support that the community offers to the members as far as health provision is concerned, considering Ponte Clinic Pote Jinai. So there's also an arrangement that welfare has with different hospitals, for example, the Aga Khan Hospital, the MP Shah Hospital, the Medihil Hospital, and uh, Reliance Hospital, so several others at the end, where we have uh, relationships with the hospitals, whereby we get subsidized uh, rates, or rather discounted rates for our members of the Jamaat, and also those facilities which I said, upfront pay na is made available uh, to those uh, Jamaat members, Panjaga Koyuan. And uh, as far as the other members are concerned, now that is a very small chunk if you look at it, like 20 members, but also other members are admitting and they can't afford, then the welfare still steps in. But beyond that, the care is primarily self-based, initiated uh, usually. The, what happens is like, let's say those who have got insurances, they seek care through their insurances with the facilities that they can. 
um, access. Whereas those who do not have insurances, then there's a lot of out-of-pocket uh, payments that happen within the reach of those members. So truly speaking, we don't specifically have a structured uh, proactive model at the moment as we speak, but that's what we'll discuss probably. Um, those who cannot really afford uh, health care facilities. So yes, uh, in Mombasa, health, uh, welfare uh, is playing a very, very huge role in uh, the well-being of our, of our members. Um, Dr. Musa, um, you've been a uh, resident here. Um, Jiki, Kenya may be structured, Mombasa may at a different level, Nairobi slightly, whatever, not as, as good as Mombasa. But U.S. may have Jamaat members like that. Is there any, any structure, is there any model, or, or is it all um, private healthcare? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, the last time I faced Ahmed <laughs> in Memon Villa in a similar setting where we were debating each other, I don't know if you remember that, Ahmed. So I, I have that, those memories revived, you know. <laughs> I don't know who won, so I won't say that, but I don't know if you remember that. Anyway, he's firing questions at me again, you know, rebutting and so on. Uh, Alhamdulillah, <clears throat> um, you know, I was blessed to be born here, to be raised here, I did my primary education, medical school, practiced for six years in Kenya, and then moved on to the U.S. That was destiny from Allah. Kenya has lost <coughs> U.S. gain. <laughs> Thank you. The 25 years in the U.S. now, and uh, alhamdulillah, the healthcare system in the U.S. is so much different from the healthcare system in Kenya, obviously. Nepanjo, unfortunately, Jamatjo, we don't have any healthcare system in the NMJ, USA, or NMJ, NA Jamaat as such. It's so widespread, so many states. One state is just like one country here. So unfortunately, the, I mean, the system, healthcare system generally is, you know, is insurance driven, basically. In the U.S., it's entirely, almost entirely insurance driven, uh, funded either by the government or private insurance. So, and I'm sure, you know, we've been talking about globalization and so on, and it's not only NMJ globalization, I mean, the world is globalizing, and that system will slowly trickle its way through to Kenya as well, I'm sure of that. I'm, I'm sure Nairobi Aga Khan probably, or some of these hospitals are already dealing a lot with insurance-based, you know, payments and so on. So, having said that, you know, there's no direct comparison, you know, with the NMJ, you know, Jamaat in North America and here. Uh, but... Uh, I've been studying, and I don't know if it's my time to speak a little more about, you know, my uh, proposal, but we can talk about it later. Uh, I've been closely following the events in Mombasa, and Gekal Rajavetra Father Sate, you know, we were having the Kalyonan, and I was looking at the clinic, and I remember when I was here, it was just one floor, the Aisha Bai Haji Abu clinic, and now it's like multi-story, four floor, it's gone up, it's widened, so I'm very, you know, amazed at the progress, you know, in, in Mombasa and all the support systems. And then COVID-19 really, you know, brought out, you know, the talent in our Jamaat. You know, in our Jamaat, there's a lot of talent, there's a lot of resources, and we saw that in COVID-19. And I think we should build up on that. And that's, you know, where I'm proposing, you know, what we call a medical, you know, Memon Medical Home. We'll talk about that later. Um, Jazakallah, Dr. Musa. Yeah, um, Dr. Musa was my senior in medical school when I was joining. He was in his final year. So we're all looking up to Dr. Musa at that time. I think it was one of the um, very first, after the initial Lord, very first Maimons. And he set the trend, mashallah. And alhamdulillah, we have many, many doctors in the Jamaat now. Okay. So, Panki, over the million years, Mombasa, Nairobi, Kuroleto, US, of course, is a different thing altogether. Um, Demographics, we go to our demographics. Demographics change in the slightly. Um, populations are different. And again, I, I'm going to ask uh, Alim uh, to uh, talk about um, challenges growing as far as pediatrics is concerned and children in our Jamaat are concerned. And I have to start with pediatrics because I'm a pediatrician. 
Uh, okay, it's a very difficult question to answer, but uh, um, we have a majority of our population uh, is gearing towards the elderly. Yeah? So we have to come up with a model to um, take care of that, that set of population. Yeah? But we should also realize that uh, we don't have an insurance uh, policy as in the US and uh, the other countries. So majority of the uh, expenditure or healthcare cost is borne by self. Yes? So, and mainly it's private. So we don't have we, we we don't have statistics. We don't have very well established statistics uh, in our jamaat that what uh, what percentage of pediatric population uh, uh, is uh, assessing our clinic, what percentage is assessing outside. Yeah. Similarly, with uh, maybe maybe in the elderly, yes, we do have some maybe some sort of uh, statistics because the welfare is part of that system. So maybe the welfare has some records, so probably that. But um, I will not be able to concretely say exactly what is happening outside. Yeah? Um, thank you. And, and, um, so many of the abstracts are about preventive health care, um, um, and which is important because growth here normally, you know, doctor, you know, and, um, and, and especially for the adult population, We've been told that prevention is, is, is better now, the models of preventive care are better. So pediatrics, I mean, I'm thinking to myself, okay, so well baby checkups and vaccinations. Vaccinations, yes. So vaccinations, I mean, so what do we think? Do we, as at Memorial Medical Center, do we offer all the vaccinations, uh, um, not only beyond the, what the government recommends, by private clinics, which went through, do we offer the, those vaccinations as well? Well, last year uh, we, we initiated the vaccination program at the Memon Medical Center. And uh, uh, because it's, 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 it's in its infancy stage, yeah, for now we just offer the basic uh, vaccination uh, offered by the government. Yeah? But uh, because our numbers are also low, yeah, and uh, the optional vaccines, so basically, I mean, we all know that we have the optional and the compulsory vaccines. So optional vaccines are a bit more expensive. So uh, for now, we, we are just uh, confined to the, to the basic vaccination program. So I understand that, but I'm just thinking to myself, and, and as pediatricians in private practice, we know that, alhamdulillah, the, the private vaccines Costly rain is because um, they're individually packed and all that, but they're so important and we, we promote and we advocate for those vaccinations to be given to all our children. Uh, I know that sometimes uptake is a problem, uh, but I think as, May, as Mayman uh, Education um, Health Board or uh, Mayman Medical Center, if we can get those private vaccinations on board at, you know, uh, and we can, we can negotiate with the suppliers, okay, we need to get this um, at reasonable rates, because we can offer this not only our community but also the wider community. Because the truth is, Kepanke vaccination, we will need to make sure that our children are vaccinated. Now, here's some of these vaccines. I mean, this is standard in, in Western countries. You know, they have no option. Many times, school may enter in some of the states in the US. I know in California, for example, when I was, the child cannot enter school if you don't show the vaccination card, uh, fully updated vaccination card. So, some of these things that maybe, Charlie, we should work towards. Um, I know that Hafsa and Samira have not spoken. Don't worry, I'm coming to you. <laughs> so from pediatrics, we move to the adults and especially as far as women are concerned. So Dr. Hafsa, what do you think challenges as far as women in our Jamaat are concerned um, many years ago and current challenges could win and what do you anticipate future? Okay, um, I think we need to focus on prevention. We have a lot of... Um, it's not going to happen to me kind of attitude. Um, presently, uh, like just tomorrow, we have a camp for uh, HPV testing and HPV vaccination and uh, mothers, some of them sitting here are reluctant to vaccinate their girls. Others, uh, 
I haven't registered for the testing. So it's, it's a kind of an attitude that I am a Muslim, it won't happen to me. And we need to move beyond that because we live in an open society. And okay, and going beyond that, we generally need to focus on prevention. As much as we are thinking of a Mammon hospital, prevention is, um, is what we can do. You can't ask somebody to go to a Mammon hospital. And I think that is what MMC is uh, really going through at the moment. You, it is there for the community, but it's not being used by the community. And uh, that's a very, you know, it's, a, it's one of the root problems, to be candid, right? Um, so prevention is something that we really need to focus on. Um, the population is growing older. More women are surviving beyond menopause. All, almost all the medical problems that women experience are related to menopause. And we need to manage that as well. Um, women, cancers in women are becoming, um, are on the rise. We need to look into that. We need to look into prevention. We know we have um, pockets of genetic inheritance. We need to educate those families. And then the other thing that we really need to look for women is support systems. And as much as we talk about health support systems, health support systems will become, will um, change into social systems because women's health is all about their social well-being. Um, and as much as we talk about um, their physical health, their social and mental well-being is as important and it plays a very important part in a woman seeking for help right, and uh, taking it up if she has a problem, going ahead with the treatment plan and with the maintenance plan beyond that. A woman will always put her family before her. So if she has to spend like 2,000 on a preventive um, initiative, she's not going to do it. She'd rather, put, she'd rather save that for her family or put that for her family. So how can we try and make that easy? And for my contribution, that's always my focus. How can we try and make that easier for our women? So, what do, what do you think, Afsa? What do you propose? Like a hijiki, attitudes and attitudes difficult to change. Uh, my bachcha ji pala vyadi ve, as you said, um, dhani ji vyadi ve, you know, family ji, whatever way. The hijiki, the other attitude ke mukhe anything do. For example, agar savare panchi jamaat HPV ji screening kare thi, and if we have very few people, panchi jamaat ladies um, coming up for that screening, kule ke cervical cancer, mukhe anything do. So. It's not an easy thing, but what do you think? What can we do? Like, this is why we're here. How can we change attitudes? Well, we need to educate, 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 but it's becoming increasingly difficult. Initially, uh, forums, when we used to have forums, we used to have uh, um, a good turnout. But now when we have forums, or we're constantly told, <laughs> let's have fun. <laughs> Let's have something to enjoy. I'm, I'm being, actually, I'm being pretty serious because I've, I've, you know, sometimes you turn up, you've prepared yourself, and you don't get the audience. So we need to educate. We, um, we need to understand that it will happen to us. And maybe we need uh, sometimes to do it in, um, we don't need to have big forums. We need to individualize. We need to approach people, you know, in a certain age group and talk to them at their level. Um, we need to basically break those barriers. At this point, I, I'll ask um, anybody from the audience, Anke Kurulagutu, ladies, I tell you, Dr. Hafsa, what she said, I mean, she's, she's being very candid and truthful. Anke Kurulagutu, attitudes change thin you, thin you. Yes, please. From the audience, uh, if you can kindly introduce yourself as well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I'm Nasreen Marwani from Canada. I have a suggestion. Uh, I fully agree with Dr. Hafsa Jin. Educate, education is important. But instead, um, I, I personally feel that we should educate uh, not only the women, but we, we should educate the couples, both men and women. Maybe the man should understand what the woman is going through and that should be there for them 
as much as what the woman is doing for the house, the children, and the husband. So the man should be there by side with her to understand how she's feeling, and he should, he should be there to, to take care of her. It's an equal responsibility for both the man and the woman to be there for each other. Thank I, you. I, 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 we eat uh, fine, fine, whatever the bullet you can let them do. Uda in your choice now, and then you die your two way. Pang go like a pang. Do we actually listen? Do we actually uh, empathize? Ke pang, ladies saying, in your vaccination, current joy, in your he cancer, I one of the most common cancers um, in women. And effect, I mean, by the time it's detected, it's quite late. Ahmad, sorry. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Sadiq Admani, Canada. The biggest problem is assurance of privacy. Because women, they don't feel comfortable coming forward, probably, that even if they are suspected, it will not remain a private affair between the client and the patient and the doctor. Probably it will spread out and burn down the vein, something like that, you know. So if you can assure the patient that privacy is will be maintained, I think they'll come forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Abdullah? Yeah, I fully agree with uh, what, what the lady said. Yeah. Um, I think gents, gents do play a role yeah? in whatever medical condition, yeah? in whichever, be it chronic, be it acute, gents do play a role. And uh, at the end of the day, it is the gent who has to dish out the cash most of the times. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> Don't make I mean, the mistake Bilal made. Majority, majority, yeah, okay. But anyway, uh, that was on the lighter side, but yeah, um, I agree with her. But uh, further to that, I think uh, nowadays what, uh, because there's awareness created, there's a lot of awareness created in the youth, yeah? As Dr. Hafsa said, you see, there's a, a set mindset for the for, for the older generation, you see? Yeah, because there was no awareness during those times. Right now, there's a lot of awareness, there's a lot of publicity regarding the various chronic diseases and all that. So I think, I think things are changing yeah, with the current population that we have. So I agree with that and, oh sorry, please. Yeah. Asalaamu Alaikum. Uh, I'm Sir Barwani from Canada. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You can't tell me about it. Sorry. Okay. Hi. Okay. Go on. Please. Am I allowed now? <laughs> no, there are a few points which I just wanted to mention. First was uh, about this lady, if you're going to say about the ladies. Why can't our medical system also have a place for women? Why can't our medical system also have a place for women? Why can't our medical system also have a place for women? Why can't our medical system also have a place for women? Why can't our medical system also have a place for women? Why can't our medical system also have a place for women? Why can't our medical system also have a place for women? Why can't our medical system also have a place for women? Why can't our medical system also have a place for women? Why can't our medical system also have a place for women? Why can't our medical system also have a place for women? Why can't our medical system also have a place for women? Why can't our medical system also have a place for women? Why can't our medical system also have a place for women? Why can't our medical system also have a place for women? Why can't our medical system also have a place for women? Why and all the cervical, uh, and the, and the cervical uh, cancer, like a checkup thing. So every few years, those things are done for the ladies. And I believe that if the doctors here can discuss with the medical board and come up with that program, so because with no cost to the, to the ladies, they can come and physically get themselves checked. That's my one point. And the second point I wanted to ask the panelists, the doctors here all in, from Kenya, basically, uh, what have you thought about, about the pediatrician? You are one of the pediatricians. What have you thought about our communities, children who are mentally challenged and physically challenged? Is there any something that you people have thought about? Because that's the, I mean, Alhamdulillah, so far, we have seen very few mentally and physically challenged children in our community. But I believe it's, it's on, the, also on the increase. And what has the, the current uh, doctors in Kenya, or for our Jamaat, or the medical board, what have they thought about those, those kind of uh, challenges for the children and for their parents? Because the parents go through a lot of f physical and psychological issues because they, are, they, they cope up with a lot of these uh, mentally and physically challenged children. Thank you. Can I answer him, please? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, initially, when I started, uh, I had mentioned that Memon Health Services Board has a lot of arms. Yeah. So one of these, as you mentioned, yeah, is uh, getting towards providing uh, health services to the, the physically challenged and all that. 
we are we are not yet there but it is in the it, it, we are planning it it is in our plans that yes uh, we are getting towards that uh, your your other uh, yes okay so that's that that's also that's also part of our plan that uh, yeah okay um to answer your question about safety okay it's uh not comprehensive like you'd expect, but we, we, what we have is a Memon Cancer Support Group. I think about 10, 12 years ago, we saw the need, 10 years ago, we saw the need of establishing this because, uh, you know, cancer was becoming rampant all of a sudden and, you know, uh, we know that you, you know, the whole family goes through a kind of a turmoil when you, when you go through cancer. It's financial, it's mental, uh, right? So, uh, we found the need to come up with the Memon Cancer Support Group. Uh, and uh, initially the idea was to support uh, cancer patients, to bring them together, to teach them survi survival skills. And we also included screening camps. So this is what I'm talking about, right? We used to do breast cancer screening and cervical cancer screening yearly um, in the month of October, which is the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We just haven't had it for the past two years because of COVID, right? And so we brought it, this year we brought it forward to, uh, to have it uh, done with the Alami <coughs> event. So uh, this is what I'm trying to say, that we offer the services, we don't get the response. Let me, let me respond to that. So I think Andrejiki point was, that's exactly what I wanted to raise, is fixing. That is your point, and that's true. If we identify the risk categories and who should be screened, Nepoipa population can identify karu within our Jamaat through our databases, ke 15 year old ketu chokriyan. How many ladies are at that age? Not only with females, but overall when we look at screening, I think that's what we should be doing is ke fixed timings one where you're now sending reminders, you're following up, ke you need to get your screening done, it's time come. I think that's what you meant. And in addition to that, uh, some, I think seven, eight years ago, we had a program especially for ladies, the Serat, yeah, which was get towards providing uh, uh, comprehensive health services for, the, for our ladies of the, for, for the Jamaat, yeah. Um, we are trying to revive that program, yeah. Fully, fully for the ladies. Yeah. So, which will also include the, the the cancer support group and you know the works. So maybe so Samira, Samira can answer more. Finally, Samira. Has Sorry. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, everybody. So one thing that is coming out clear is that Pakistan Milke Panje Pote Ji Health Ji Pella Ownership Karan Ji Hai. So as long as you do not own the fact that I need to be healthy, but jetri a camps rakta si, jetra appointments lai maroin ke bola inda si, jetra a vakhat pahini ke reminders hala inda si, he ni na achinda. He da panje society mein jiki problem hai which we have basically noted is that we are very laid back where our health is concerned. Pa baat na rinda si ke jade ji jo pa ke dukh do tade pa binda si. Paanche bairiu achin jiki pa ke chon ke asa ke hi problem hevar shuru nai thiyo. Chaar varas thiyamu ke hi problem hai. Had we have attended to her earlier, we would have had to spend less money, but more so, we would have saved her life, the turmoil that she went through. There is a lot of stigma surrounding most of the health conditions. If you look at cancers, today if you have a member in your family who is diagnosed with cancer, it is the top secret. Why? Why have we made cancer to become something that we don't want to speak about? If somebody is diagnosed with diabetes, you'll see that person enjoying his Coca-Cola because he doesn't want to disclose to his friends that I'm diagnosed with diabetes. It can't work that way. It can't work that way. If we are here to please everybody else about our health, we wouldn't be able to move forward. So as long as we will not be able to educate our people about taking ownership of their health, we'll go on round and round all these discussions and we won't be able to take 
any step forward from where we are. So as much as all these are important, I personally feel that today, or IME Milan is the time whereby we take this particular promise to ourselves. I'm not going to land in hospital with a heart attack because I've never bothered going for a VP check ever. It doesn't work that way. And how we're going to do that is something that we all need to think about. And it starts, change starts with that one person. Change starts with you and change starts with me. If all of us here are able to educate even five people about this thing, then we'll have spread the message. Thank you so much. Sorry. Sorry. So, finally, when she spoke, mashallah. Um, I think sometimes in meeting, meetings when I think upon the chairman, um, UK Jamaat Chachavia, okay, sometimes you need to come up with some concrete, um, uh, you know, resolutions. And one of the things that's coming out clearly, uh, and it's not easy. I mean, we all know attitude change is not easy. Okay, koi, you know, ochindo uh, winine. We did a medical camp recently in Nairobi, and we had um, uh, one of our elderly ladies who knows that she has a problem with her sugars and her pressures, but she says, now, Mombasa me wis, balabaris, Nairobi mak interview hai. Nay, jasi test, test, test karo na, test kanda, poy chonda hi karo na hi karo. So, I mean, those attitudes are difficult to change, but as, as Samira is saying, I mean, I'm just thinking to myself, how can we change this? Attitudes that they, I'll tell you one thing, the newer generation, as somebody pointed out clearly, I'm a pediatrician, I've been practicing for uh, 20 years, alhamdulillah. I've seen the change, and I'm mastikara, kara, I've watched ki, ki young couples are chin, panya jamaat wara, ke, have a chin, the, um, usually, you know, for couple way, father and mother, with a child coming in, newborn baby way, vaccinations, danger way, the, you know, it's not previously I'm, I want to challenge um, myself and Idajikian fathers in this audience, especially 40 and above. How many of you went to the hospital um, to with your wife uh, when your child needed vaccinations? It's such a well enjoy. Allah Taala mein record karte rehte. Or gadi mein bata. So what I noticed now, alhamdulillah, the last few years, is that alhamdulillah, they're coming. The fathers are coming. I can put a diaper change, can they put it? The current crop of, mashallah, the youngsters in, alhamdulillah, diapers change current. Oh, I wife can't put a diaper change, can I put a diaper change? Clam gill tears, whatever. So, when you put it? How past the power of it? Attitudes are changing. So that's an attitude change that you'll take, alhamdulillah. So new generation, they know about their, their spouses much more than we ever bothered, you know. Um, so alhamdulillah. That, but that's, that's a generational change. It's, it's going to take a while. But what I liked about Samira's idea, that Pamini, the five people, Pamini Panji family, Vinje, Miri ke Joje, ke hin age they anjo blood pressure check karai girayo. What we have been doing, Alhamdulillah, in Nairobi for the last several years is screening camps. Who medical camps one, moke hi dukheto ne, hida dukheto ne, paracetamol mile. Those, in our opinion, don't serve much purpose. The, the camps are the screening camps. Detect high, high blood pressure and diabetes early and cancers early. Okay, so those are the ones. So, I think if we all go out today, and say ke paanke meri ke paanji family immediate and extended make sure age of 40 we can't force you to come but as family ai agar chonda make sure karo i want to say he and your father and mother and sister and you know bhabhi ai ai please ai check kare you know and we can facilitate memon medical center can facilitate in mombasa and of course in nairobi that's our plan as society said we want to bring in specialists you know services initially Okay, so I think that's the change that can happen immediately. Who generational change achin do? Our our lagdi. You know, we youngsters ain. Alhamdulillah. Achkal ja chokra bujan tamasha da radde. I'm not sure ke okay jaki ain shonkin, but baki ja jaki achun gare ne mani ne sa tayar khape. You know, ne pa khai gin dasi ne plate idaj rakta si nali bin dasi. Adule ko biyo ko khani bin do pan. Hawa ja jaki ain chokri ekabul na karitiu. Oh, 
હું સ્લાઈટલી એક્સપેક્ટ કરી દઉં કે વચાઈને હેલ્પ કરે માને કરવા જો પૂછી દો પચાવી દે કરે મારું જ્યારે ડિફિકલ્ટ હોય માને પચાવીનું ભાવ જાજી માંજી કરું તો કરાં રેગ્યુલર પણ યુ નો એક્સપેક્ટ કરી દો કે વચીનો સલાડ પ્રિપેર કરી દો કે ચા એ પ્રિપેર કરી દો નહીં સો એ આઈ પણ આઈ થિંક આઈ લાઈક સમીરાઝ આઈડિયા નાઉ ફોર ઇન્ટરેસ્ટ ઓફ ટાઈમ એન્ડ આઈ નો દે ખાલી કેનેડા વાળા બોલી એને સુધી પણ બેંક એ ટાઈમ મિલતો ઇન્શા અલ્લા આઈ ગોઈંગ ટુ ના મૂવ ટુ સમીરા ડોક્ટર અહેમદ આઈ બીફોર પ્રોસીડ કરો સો ટુ કમ ટુ ધેટ Dr. Ahmed here is, pro- uh, is proposing that bahi karyo. But again, the restriction or the drawback is the cost. So, here is the one that I have to say to my family members that I have 50 years to do this holocolonoscopy. So, that is nearly 500 US dollars that you are spending after each of your patients, each of your family members. So, how can our Jamaat now step in Through what plan are we moving forward? Are we talking of insurance-based payments? Again, are we talking of an Islamic way of getting that done? Are we talking of telling our members that you need to pay for this out of their pockets? So this is what I would preempt the discussion to. So it is preempting because the next discussion is on that. The whole panel discussion that's coming up. um on insurance and all that yes dr musa please yeah so from i mean very valuable suggestions comments honestly and this is where you know i'm thinking and i would be suggesting at this point you know the way the the memon medical home would be useful and that's i don't know if you read my abstract yet but uh, it's not a physical space but it has so yes here at memon clinic may not many of our members you re- want to go there and for obvious reasons right but we are blessed with so many healthcare professionals in various fields of specialization i mean alhamdulillah here and in nairobi we have so many support workers welfare i right and others uh, we do have infrastructure about a pharmacy about a lab i as li- at least for basic stuff right so the the suggestion here would be that every individual you know right from the baby that's born to the oldest member of the jamaat should be part of that medical home now what is that medical home it's a comprehensive you know medical care delivery system to so every individual or family unit is connected to one particular provider physician or angel primary physician way primary care provider way of their choice from the jamaat obviously you know who then becomes the conductor of the orchestra basically to hira ko the ke that physician and there could be an internal medicine physician could be a, a, fa- a family physician could be an obgyn it could be you know but like hira part a primary care physicians you know i mean everybody goes to over here and the, unfortunately the system here is acute care right we respond to acute emergencies acute illnesses whereby what you need like we've discussed you know in detail is preventive care you know promotion of health preventive care treatment of acute care but also thereafter rehabilitation upon disabilities mental jo gal kya si right all that comes under rehabilitation so he jiki model i so we have a primary physician who is running the show basically that the family or the patient or the family deal with directly and then he or she you know has a team of and, and at his you know disposal he has you know a, a referral network that's where the memon medical association would be very helpful ke panjo network i already established right we have you know endocrinologists we have you know cardiologists gastroenterologists pediatricians so they would send in the primary provider would send in the referral and then get back the feedback and he still is in charge when it comes to screening then and that's where our it team would be very helpful because we need an electronic health system right so at, at every 3 months diabetic way hemoglobin a1c jo flag you know would show up on the screen you know what the app pamada sabuta and so on and with that with that app you know the patients and the families can book appointments you know easily can communicate with the providers you know 
pharmacy, you know, our pharmacy stand it Again, the Panjo refills, you know, GJFR, especially the elderly population, medications, you know, probably they're running out of medications without knowing, you know, medications pati when you so a week passes, two week passes, medications pati when. Well, if it's they're linked to a pharmacy, Panji Potaji pharmacy, the two weeks prior to the medication running out, there's a flag that shows up. And then, you know, they would call the family or the patient, send them the medications, and so on and so forth. Screening, the same thing. When it comes to rehab, you know, we can, and then that's where, you know, it would get employment opportunities in the Jamaat. But train courage, a physical therapist saying, speech therapist saying, you know, occupational therapist saying, dietitians and So all those, you know, are part of the medical home. You know, it's a virtual home run by the primary physician who is doing the referrals and following up with the patient and the families. Then we go like a patient autonomy, it's all eventually, I mean, finally, whatever the case, they will not do it. You cannot force somebody to go through anything, right? But encouraging, reminding, showing them the data, it is in the US, it has been shown to be very helpful. And that's how the trend is in the US now, you know, that you deal with the primary physician and they will, you know, in the power infrastructure, I, so why not give it a try? That's what I would say. Um, excellent suggestion by Dr. Musa. Sorry. Um, He's chairman, and so I, I have to give him a chance, you know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm back in the chancery in school. I've been told already, okay, we, are, um, we need to close. Asalaamu Alaikum. Sorry to take up this, because um, I think it's we are just such a crucial conjuncture that I don't, didn't want to miss the point. You talk about primary doctor. Now, if the primary doctor is not a Maimon, Nasapuriya Maimon, what happens then? Because he's not going to refer anybody to a, one of the specialist panel we have, and what happens there? So what is the role of the primary doctor, or how do we go about getting a primary doctor who is a Nasapuriya Maimon, who can refer it to somebody who is within the panel? That's, that's a crucial point. If, if you've got somebody outside, he's not going to refer it to a panel of doctors, specialists, with our, which are within our community. It's not going to go further. Correct? So, Chairman Sam, thank you for your point. And, I, and an important point. However, I think, I think we need to first, what Dr. Musa has mentioned, so people go into specializations. And or if you don't want to specialize, if you work as what is known as a medical officer, then you'll most likely work in hospitals, okay, um, or clinics. That's where you're going to whatever. And alhamdulillah, it's fine. It's, it's been working. But the most strategic proposal is slightly different. So what I'm thinking, one, we need to actually anchor, because we have alhamdulillah, more than 100 doctors in our Jamaat now? More than 100 doctors. 200 doctors. A lot of, alhamdulillah, with, with many specialists and sub-specialists, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. However, family care physicians work chain. So this is something that we need to think uh, and start encouraging our young doctors to go into family care, knowing that this is more, and the truth is, as Dr. Musa is saying, it's going to come here. Aga Khan Hospital, Nairobi, 85 to 90 percent of patients are now insurance. There's very little, few cash-paying patients coming in. Ujama chain, maimon khali, labagi, jigwinanda jigwinanda so we need to move toward that concept. In the meantime, we need to promote that Memon Medical Center to, so that, as Dr. Alim is saying, hardly, Panj Jamaatwara hardly, you know, utilize current service. So how do we, we can't force them to come. So again, we need feedback from them. So I think we need a, a little, whatever, questionnaire or one-on-one. We know, we know. Kali welfare jakulaya chinta, Memon Medical Center. I've passed through it's a decent clinic, nicely set up, you know, Maria, everything is good. It's not like a shady, you know, Isliji clinic line. And yet, that, that shady Isli clinics are better populated and have more patients, and we have a Memon Medical Center. So something is not right. So we need to ask our people, Kulayana So I think that's where we need to move towards. Now, once they start coming, then that concept will come in, you know, Anjo Jeki concept, amazing concept, and IT, I was thinking about the same thing. Vaccinations in, flag thing, we have this system, you know, whatever. You know, our secretary's call, 
वैक्सीनेशन ड्यू आए बच्चे के खाने चीज़ा सो सेम थिंग अगर कोलोनोस्कोपी ड्यू आए तो सिस्टम शुरू ही शुरू फ्लैग ये डा कोलोनोस्कोपी ड्यू आए ये डा मेमोग्राफी ड्यू आए ये डा ने ऐ जगह चाह प्रेस्क्रिप्शन जो एंड एंड डॉक्टर तो जल्दी ना चिंदा को लगे अगर पैसा नून दा अगर वेलफेयर माते ना आया भैया पैसा को कोई रिलेटिव ना ही दी नहीं पैसा कम हली भी आएं तो बेटर है आई कैन टॉक फ्रॉम माय ओन पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस आई हैव विद इन द फैमिली समबडी डिसाइड्स टू टेक मेडिसिंस वंस अ वीक और ट्वाइस अ वीक और बिकॉज थिंक्स दैट यू नो समबडी इज गोइंग टू हैव टू पे फॉर दोस मेडिसिंस मेडिसिन सपोज टू बी टेकन ऑन डेली बेसिस ओके आई वी हैव एक्सपीरियंस पीपल आर चिन I, Jamaat cha patients achin what I know why they are coming because many times child is sick. If they go to another doctor, the doctor will say admit current way. We, Alim and I will have to try and manage it as an outpatient, knowing very well that the child requires inpatient. We have to manage. Kula ke nine pesa admission like karne otherwise. So many challenges, many challenges. Unfortunately, I mean when I saw this and what Dr. Abid had prepared, and um, I was discussing it with my with my daughter who is also a medical student, and you know. कि इच्छु कि ही हाफ एन आवर जो था सेशन नहीं थी सके इतना ऑलमोस्ट टू और टू एंड आफ और सेशन है बट वी हैव टू क्लोज आई बीन टोल वी हैव टू क्लोज डॉक्टर समीरा हैड एन अमेजिंग एब्स्ट्रैक्ट ऑन एल्डरली केयर अनफॉर्च्युनेटली वी कांट एंड एंड डॉक्टर साइरस ओकोल हैड टू एब्स्ट्रैक्ट्स वन ऑन एक्यूट केयर एंड वन ऑन � Um, I think the challenge is on us now as the medical team, inshallah, we need to get together. Maybe we need a forum. APSA Bank can sponsor a forum for medicals. <laughs> Pride in May, three-day event way, fully paid for. Hi. Oh, Pride in can sponsor. Ah, Pride in. Doctors like Aaron, I want to KPA conferences in the next 10 years, inshallah. Hi, I, we need to close, but because I know him so well and he's a, whatever, I have to ask him to say the final word. Uh, thank you, Dr. Saab. This is a one-liner, and it's food for thought for later on. Uh, all doctors, those present here, with all due respect to you, you do take uh, the Hippocrates oath, if I'm not mistaken, isn't it? Uh, can we have a memon oath for all doctors, inshallah? <laughs> Chairman Saab. An oath that is going to say, we want you to make your money, please. Don't get us wrong, but we want you to look at every mammon patient with a more benevolent mind uh, inshallah i know dr ramad you do a fantastic job yourself and we pray to allah that everyone is like you inshallah so thank you food for thought jazakallah uh, khair dr ramad and uh, the panelists for a uh, tea break or uh, when I saw the buffet uh, set up, it's more of a breakfast break or brunch break. So we will all uh, break and once we move out of the hall, we go towards our right, the buffet is set. Uh, we will request uh, once you guys are uh, done with uh, food, to pajaldi pachochinu so that we can continue. We'll give you another 15 minutes, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. <laughs>